declared death in judicial custody is of great concern. It is of concern because there is an attempt to make the abnormal normal. The kind of response that one should have seen from the Maharashtra state government, the central government, meaning the Union Home Ministry, statutory bodies like the National Human Rights Commission, the Maharashtra State Human Rights Commission, the National Minorities Commission, it looks like all of them have gone to sleep. Or there is some kind of a conspiracy in the silence. And I say this with great amount of care and thought. Secondly, in the case of Muhammad Fasi, who is supposed to be held still in South, Saudi Arabia, which is what the Indian government seems to have indicated to the Supreme Court. Well, if you do not have him in, his custody, in your custody, and if you feel that he is still in Saudi Arabian custody, what are the diplomatic steps that you should have taken initially? you should have given what is called in diplomatic language a demarche, meaning a diplomatic note of protest to the Saudi Arabian government. You have not done so. Secondly, if the demarche had not worked, you should have called immediately your ambassador back for consultations as a mark of protest. Again, you have not done that. And you could have then calibrated further steps because when a person is a citizen of your country, when he holds your country's passport, the first page says that the, it is the duty of the Republic of India to protect his integrity wherever he travels. Clearly, the government of India has failed in this. This is not the first case of judicial custodial deaths of a terrorist suspect. We have seen this a large number of them in Kashmir. We have seen a large number of them in the Northeast. We have seen a large number of them in the old days in the Punjab. But we have also seen in 2009, just in the adjoining state of UP, the custodial death of Mahabharata Shakil in 2009 June, where initially the police and the jail authorities said that he had died by hanging. Fortunately, a good lawyer and a good decent judicial magistrate ordered a post-mortem uh, uh, report and the post-mortem revealed that he had died of aluminium phosphide oil. Nothing has happened. Where have the perpetrators been arrested? My concern is not just the individual deaths of particular citizens of India. They are not just Muslims and minorities requiring greater care and greater protection. But they are citizens of this country which need the whole country's protection. The fact is that the state is creating a lawless atmosphere by laws like the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, which allows people to be held without a charge sheet for as long as 60 days against the 90 days period in normal law, or 60 days in some other offenses. It the normal law of the land does not allow mandatory compensation to all victims of human rights violations. Where is this democracy? If there is no mandatory compensation, you all remember that boy was arrested in Australia. How much did he get? He almost got three quarters of a million Australian dollars in compensation for 26 days in illegal custody. I don't want three quarters of a million Australian dollars. I want at least three quarters of a million Indian rupees for a death in custody. He was only in illegal custody for 26 days. You have allowed Section 197, which was brought by the British to protect British officers from prosecution in the in the in the Privy Council for atrocities against freedom fighters to be remained on the statute book so that I cannot bring and you cannot bring prosecution unless executive sanction is given. This is a ridiculous situation in a democratic country that it is not a court of law which will decide whether there is enough to ground for prosecution, but the executive will decide and decide not to give or give depending on the case. It is a ridiculous situation. The third important area. Again and again, there is a climate of fear and suspicion to be targeted, targeted against the minorities, especially the Muslims. 
and the biggest culprit is the intelligence agencies. You cannot have a democratic country where the intelligence agencies are not under the control of parliament. There is no parliamentary oversight. There is no control of the CAG. What is this? The control and audit general cannot audit the, the parliament. It can control every other government department, including the defense and security department. What is so sacred and sacrosanct about this intelligence bureau? They, they took up all these stories. Iqbal Hospital, after the Bombay blast, was arrested and sent for seven years in jail. After the court released him, you know what he was arrested for? He, that he had a missile. You know what the missile was? It was a spindle, a textile spindle. The textile spindle was, was considered as a missile. Now, can you imagine this is the kind of situation and the kind of investigation? I believe that it is not a question of Muslim or minority rights. Today, it is the rights of these young Muslim boys. Tomorrow, it will be a right. Freedom is never taken away by one fell swoop. It is slowly eroding. And if we do not stand up now, we will not be a republic, we will be a banana republic. Thank you.